So this is Linda Tillman. We're up at the Morningside Community Gardens. The two hives that are here are these two hives and we're gonna be inspecting these hives today. But first, we have to light the smoker. So I'm not very good at it. I've been keeping bees since 2006 and I never have gotten this down to a fine science, but I'm gonna to try to show you how I light the smoker. Let me get so that the, here we go, so that the shadow isn't on top of it. So first you take a little bitty thing of pine straw. And I'm doing this for people who may not have been on a hive inspection before. I know there's some of you that are watching this that have seen many a hive inspection. The wind is so bad that my flame doesn't want to light. Here we go. Oh, didn't say that bit on now. There we go. Okay, so we want our flame to be well lit. And this first bit of uh, pine straw to get really burning. And while it's doing its thing, I get a little ball of pine straw ready to put on top of it. Meanwhile, I keep pumping the bellows because I want it to be excited about being a smoker today. So now I'm going to put some more in and pump some more. Get another little bit. You don't want to put in great huge clumps of pine straw. You want to put it in little bits at a time partly to keep it compact and partly not to uh, smush your fire and put it out. Alright, I'm going to put one more little bunch in there and that's probably all we need for this group of two hives to be inspected. Alright, so now I'm going to close it and we have lit our smoker. Now before we do anything else, we're going to start with this hive. So we're going to come over here to this hive and we're going to look at it and see what do we see at the entrance of the hive. So I want y'all to watch and see. And you'll notice I have an entrance reducer on. I keep an entrance reducer on all year long. I put it on the wide opening like it is in this moment on this hive. I made the mistake one year of leaving a hive to put the entrance reducer on. It was no opening. I had no idea I died that. Of course, the hive died over the winter. But luckily, a, a swarm moved in the next spring. So you just saw a bee going in with pollen on her legs. And what we want to see right now, it's 3.30 in the afternoon. I mean, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's a little late to do a hive inspection and uh, see what we might want to see. But generally, at this time of day, you'll still see, see there went another one with pollen on her legs. Seeing a bee coming in with pollen on her legs, as I've said in other inspections, is an indication that you have a laying queen inside. You also might notice the tall grass around this hive. I didn't bring my snippers today, but this is on um, a community garden where Georgia Power maintains the land and they don't like to come around the bees. Okay, so we've examined the front of the hive and now I'm going to move us to the back of the hive and put on my jacket and, and protective gear. So I'm going to set this where you can see what you need to see and raise the apple stop for a moment. Okay, so now we're going to be in there and they're going to not like it, but I'm going to do it again anyway. Since this is a map of hive inspection and I'm trying to do a good job by you guys. So I've gotten kind of far into the second box, but we're going to start this part. I'm going to go ahead and fix this so I don't have to disturb them again. So I'll show you that they were building bad comb in this box. They had, this was the second to the, oh shoot. Yeah, this was the second to the, um, uh, this was next to the, it was the second frame in, the one I pulled out to hang on the frame rack. And what it turned out to have is uh, comb built on both sides of the frame. Now I don't want them to do that. I'm going to put this one next to the wall so that this little teardrop doesn't become an issue. It doesn't become a pattern they repeat through the hive. Then the frame next to it is an empty frame. And the frame next to that is the one we're going to use as a bridge in the new box we're going to put on. So I'm going to get the new box. And this 
is the new box. It has frames that have been dipped in wax, but none of them have any honeycomb in them. I use new wax every year. And actually, that's not true. Um, this frame, this box has one frame of drawn comb to encourage them to have a ladder to come up in. And so I'm gonna leave that one, it's in position four. And I'm gonna put this frame right here that we're gonna use for a ladder in position six in the new box. So our new box is ready. And then what we're gonna do is put this box in back in good shape. But I'm gonna look at a frame or two before we do that. So I'm gonna take Those up with a and I'm going to move the next frame over so that I have a filled frame and empty frame. It's sort of like checkerboarding, but not exactly. Look at this pretty frame. They have filled it with honey, and some of it is capped on this side. Now it's capped on that side too. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to pull that one over closer to these empty frames. So now our frames are empty, full, empty, full. And I'm going to put another empty in. And this one has wax along here, which will be enough inspiration for them to start building honeycomb. I'm going to keep separating these so they're empty full, empty full, especially because I can see there's a little bit of a tendency in this hive to do what's called cross comb when they build the comb hooking frames together. They've done that in this particular frame and I'm gonna pull it up and rubber band it. I'll show you what I'm gonna do so you can see that process as well. Now I'm going to come over here and pull up this frame where they've got it. It's filled with honey. There's something blue in it's really getting me excited. And it hasn't been the tulip popper because it's just barely started this week. And when you look at this, you can see on that edge right here, they have comb that's hanging out because they were hooking it to the frame on the other side. So in order to work on this, I need to rest it somewhere. But I'll put it right like that. Then I'll take a rubber band. Put a rubber band. sitting over here and put it between five, I'm going to make it have frame number six. I'm going to push these over so there's room. I'm going to put frame number six in. And now hopefully they will behave. Okay, so we're going to leave this box covered up and look at the bottom box again because none of that got taped. And then we'll put the hive back together with the new box on it. Let's go 
So we leave this on here to hold the hive drape down. I'm gonna take the frame rack off. A frame rack is great. If you don't have one, you should get one. And I hate doing this because I've already been in this big, big box, but I thought it was being recorded and it wasn't. So our only choice is to come back so y'all can see a few things in here, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in here because these bees have already been disturbed in this box and we'll look more thoroughly at the other half since we're not good didn't get to look at this one so thoroughly so i'm gonna pull up a frame or two i remember the there was one with eggs on it but i want y'all to see it if i can find it again that's this one so we'll take out again the second frame Pretty sure there were eggs on this frame. Let me find them and I'll show them to you again. Yes. There are eggs in here right by the honeycomb. I hope you can see them. And that's worker brood. We'll come down here again in case you couldn't see them. And down here at the bottom, that's drone brood, those kind of bullet shaped things. So, now that is all we're gonna do with this bottom box because I wanna be fair to these poor little girls because I keep bothering them and they didn't expect it to be me come back twice, we're gonna say. So we put them back just the way they were. Take the frame rack off the side. I'm gonna cover them up for a minute so they can calm down. And now we're gonna put the boxes back on and we're gonna put the new box on the top because that's what we've got it set up to do. So I'm gonna take these things off the top of this box and remove the hive drape. Well, I'm gonna keep it on for right now. We'll remove this hive drape. Lift this box up. Oh. Put it back on gently. Straighten it up. Take off the hive drape. And get the new box, which we hope they will be grateful for. Put that one on. It's very light because it's only got one frame from the hive in it and one drawn frame in it. Put the inner cover back on. Put the top back on. And we are done with this hive for today. Okay. Now we're gonna try hive number two. First I'm gonna check and make sure that this film is still going since it was not collaborative a while ago. <laughs> okay, <coughs> so again, we're gonna go to the front of the hive and see what we notice from the front of the hive. So let's watch and see what you see. This is a swarm that I collected in Inman Park. And what we wanna see are some bees flying in with pollen, which so far I don't see. Yeah, 
they're flying in, but do they have pollen? Because I don't want to have killed the queen in the last inspection, which is what that would mean if there isn't any pollen. Was that pollen I just saw? I'm not sure. There's one, yay! Okay, so there's pollen at the front of the hive. So again, what I'm gonna do is take the smoker. I hope it's still got some oomph to it. I'm terrible at buying the smoker. This one still has a little smoke in it, so I'm gonna go smoke, 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 smoke at the front of the hive. It's not nearly as enthusiastic as it was before, but it's still got some smoke. And then I'm gonna bring you all back to the back of the hive and make sure you can see Okay, so we'll start the whole process again. This hive also is going to get a new box, whether it needs one or not, because the nectar flow has started. So the first thing we do is take off the top. Now they have cockroach running around the top of the beehive, which is not a great sign. Um, and then we're, <coughs> they were using this back as an entrance. They don't seem to be doing that so much today, but we'll be cognizant of that when we put everything back together. And this is the box that we're going to and we're going <coughs> to add a new box to, and I want you to see that it is fully built out. Now these girls moved into this box; they were not using the bottom box. So we're going to see are they using the bottom box? But this brood, this box has their brood and everything else in it. So we're going to look at the bottom box first. And then we'll come back and look at this box. But this is where all the action is. I don't know why they decided to use the top box and not the bottom, but that is what they did. Which is probably why they were using the top entrance. It was closer to where Mama was. Okay. Yeah, and I can see as I look at this that they aren't using much of this box. You can already see it. You can see that there's some white wax right there on two frames, but that's about it. So they may not be making much use of this box. So again, we put a hive drape on. You notice I haven't used much smoke. I don't think I've used the smoker at all except to knock at the front door. When you use a hive drape, you hardly ever do need smoke. Part of Part of not needing smoke though, is when you're a beginning beekeeper, you tend to move too fast and you're a little clumsy and you can't help it and it's not, it's completely forgivable. But, um, but you move in slowly is important. But you know, I'm old and kind of clumsy and trip on things and all kinds of stuff. I still try to move slowly because it's much easier on the bees to have a very slow and calm inspection. Again, I'm taking out the second frame but since they're not really using this box, I'm not all that concerned about which frame I take out. And I'm going to get the hive drapes. But we don't need them much in this box because it's not um, being used much. And we're going to look and see what are they doing with this frame that's got newly built wax on it. What are they storing in here is the question. Are they using this box for honeycomb or for eggs? That's what I'm looking for, honeycomb or eggs. There are no eggs in here. And there were no eggs in here last time. There is some nectar in here on this frame. You can see the nectar. So what they've done is they've decided this, second bo this bottom box is not going to really be our home. It's where we're going to store excess honey, maybe, but we're not really going to make use of it. And I'm going to check that out. We're looking at the one other frame that they're using, which is the frame right beside that one. This one's very heavy with honey. This was drawn comb that was put in the hive as drawn comb, and they've put honey in it because that's how they've decided to use the drawn comb because of the size of the cells in the drawn comb. See all that glistening nectar? Isn't that beautiful? And we can see, as we're looking at the hive from here, that they have a third frame that they've drawn since last week. But with all this nectar, and they've only drawn 
a little bit more in this box and fully drawn this and worked on this frame they want to grow up they don't want to go down bees don't like to go down and that's why we need to give this hive a new box and this frame while it has honeycomb in it they're not really using it for anything i want to make sure there are no eggs in here there are no eggs in here so they they're probably going to store honey in there but this is not this box is not a significant box to them they could care less so we're now going to go look at where they're living put this box back together we're going to look at where they're living a lot of my hives don't use the bottom box very often or very uh, well so this one is just joining in the crowd doing the same thing that all of them do so now we're going to get the box that's the main box for this hive and look at it boxes because as my children say I am OLD and lifting big heavy boxes is not something that I do well anymore. There we go. Okay. We're going to see what's going on in this box, which is, like we said, this is their main box. So we want to see what are they doing with it. Now these are calmer bees than those over there. They're not related to each other, so, you know, we'll have to see what does that mean. Why are they so nice and calm? Maybe they're just better bees. This is a swarm that was in a hurricane fence at Inman Park. I haven't put any pictures up of how it was to take it to get the swarm, but it was something else because behind the, the fence where they were, and bees on a hurricane fence, you can't shake them off. So behind the fence was um, a thicket of azaleas and, and all kinds of weeds. It's an empty, vacant lot. It was just awful. And getting the swarm took forever, which might be why they appreciate that they have such a nice place to live now okay this is a great example of brood and eggs so in front of you right now is worker brood i have to be very careful because these are foundationless frames and we don't want them to tip to jump to fall out of the frame but if you look in that section you should be able to see eggs and tiny baby larvae And that's worker brood and isn't that just lovely now let's see what it looks like on the other side and on the other side you can see older larvae right in the center right in here the white larva is older and then that's nectar below it so when you give the bees the freedom to make their own honeycomb they do whatever they want to with it, which is pretty cool for them. Okay, so we're gonna put this one back as our uh, resting in the in the frame rack frame. And these bees are so much calmer than that last group. But maybe the last group just didn't like that I opened the bottom box twice. I mean, what do you do when the video isn't running and you think it is? if you were doing something like having a baby you know and then you didn't get the, the whole thing filmed thankfully they weren't doing that when i was having babies i don't think i'd want anybody to film me having a baby um okay here we go this one again has this is worker brood over here this is what billy davis calls light biscuit which means it's fairly new worker brood in the middle we have medium biscuit worker brood and that brood has already hatched out a lot and the queen will be coming back let me see if she's already laid in Right in here you can see we're uh, larva because she's already been back where the brood is hatched and laid some more. This is a very nice queen from this swarm. I'm really happy with her. Okay, now we've seen eggs, we've seen brood. We know the queen is fine. It's time to call to add a new box to this one and to leave these girls alone. So we're gonna put this hive back together the way we found it. 
before I completely do that, I'm going to look at the other end and just make sure that they're not doing cross cut. Notice I've pulled out any number of high tools. I have a lot of them. Uh, it helps because I'm always putting mine down and then I don't know where it is. So it helps me be able to reach down and get another one. Now, they have the cut honeycomb hooked together here. I do not think I'm going to pull this out. This is the kind of honeycomb that I'll just harvest together and leave it alone for now. So we're not going to look at another frame in here. They're using these three for honey and they don't have fruit on them. And so, oh, but we do have to pull up a frame to be a ladder. So let me find a frame to be a ladder. Let's see what we're going to use. It's also going to be 42 tonight. So it makes me real cautious about what I take to the upstairs. I'm not sure I want to take brood. So maybe despite the fact that they've got honeycomb hooked together on this one, I might just take it out anyway and discourage them from doing that. And let this one be our ladder into the next box. These need a ladder. They need direction to help them get to the next box. Something to climb up on that is already put together and get some to, oh, isn't that nice? This is brood and honey, but I'm gonna go ahead and move it to be our ladder to the next box. And I'm gonna show it to you. Right in the center of this frame, right in that area, you can see little tiny C-shaped larva. So that's gonna be our, our uh, ladder to the next box. I'm gonna put it here and go get the next box. Now this box also has a frame of drone comb in it from an old hive. So I'm going to put that in position two, three, and then I'm going to put this frame in position four that we just pulled out. It'll still be over the brood frames in the box below, which will be good because that means if the, um, if the, it'll give the brood more, it'll keep the brood more warm tonight. And I picked this up without, I'm going to set it over here. It's a safer place because I don't want the bees to fall into the dirt down there, especially if it were the queen. So I'm going to take this empty frame and put it in here in position number two, and they'll build it out and be glad to have it. And so with that ladder, they actually have two ladders in this new box. They have the drawn comb and they have the comb with the brood on it. And you'll look, if you look at this box, you can see that the brood, the one with the brood on it, the bees are staying on it because those are the nurse bees who want to keep the brood warm. And by putting it where I'm putting it, so that this is position four, position four in this box was also full of brood and that will encourage the nurse bees to come up and keep the brood warm tonight when it's gonna be 42 degrees. This one that I put in, I put in wrong, it's sticking up and you can't close the box well that way. And that would have been showing that it needs to come up on the back end, but I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm more worried about is it level side to side 
and it is level side to side. It does not look level side to side. But you need it to be level side to side when you're doing foundationless beekeeping because gravity determines whether it uh, hangs straight in the comb. So if it's not level, the gravity is going to make it make them make the hive the hive crooked. I mean the comb crooked, and they'll come out of the frame. So it's the end of the inspection. I'm going to end the movie, and I'm going to put all my stuff away, and I'll see you all at the video chat on Saturday. So this is my top bar hive. It's a uh, quarter to four and they're very busy. This was a hive that I had for seven years. I moved it to my daughter's yard and in the process I'm pretty sure we killed the queen. Um, at first I thought it was a pesticide kill because of the piles of dead bees inside the hive, but there was absolutely no brood inside the hive. And when we realized the hive was dead, it was long enough for the bees to have all emerged and for the queen to be knowingly did so um we're sad about that but i cleaned the hive out on a saturday and on wednesday following that saturday uh, this huge swarm moved in so i'm going to try to show you a little bit about what it's like to inspect the top bar hive i'm going to start by putting my camera straight up and down and showing you how i do the beginning of this inspection so again I'm going to the front and just going puff, 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 puff. I'm here. I've never filmed this top bar. I don't know how this is going to go. It is a huge hive. Huge. It looks like a coffin. I make jokes that I could be buried in it. Okay. So I open it up. Ugh. And this is what it looks like. The top bars are the roof of the hive. So as a result, um, you don't have a, oh, you can't see them, let me see. The top bars are the roof of the hive and you have, so you don't have um, uh, a top to take off except for that one that I just took apart. So I'm gonna move the tripod over here so that you can see what I'm gonna take out. It's a little hard to open a top bar hive and I never do it well. So what you have to do with the top bar hive is you have to make sure that the bar that you're taking out is not attached to the side. Hopefully the first bar isn't because that's the one we're going to take out. Now in the top bar hive the bees build all of their own comb. This is all being used to store nectar so I'm not comfortable letting it be the one I take out. So I'm going to put it back and go for the next one. It's really, I'm showing you this because it isn't easy to keep a top bar half, let me tell you. It is not. Because we need to have one out that isn't stuck to the side so that we can look at some of the rest of them. All right, here comes this one. Again, it's mostly nectar. I'm gonna turn it over and set it up on top of the hive so that I can look a little bit at what's going on. But you can't, there, I don't have a frame wrap for this hive, so it's a little hard to figure out how to manage it. Okay, so we're going to take this one out if we can. If it's not stuck to the side, it doesn't appear to be. I'd like to see some brood in here. Right now, what I'm pulling out is all honey. This too, all nectar and pollen. All nectar and pollen. Now this next one, I'm going to take, I have this very special hive tool for a top bar that helps you go along the side and, and undo any, any attachment they've made along the side so that it 
it's easier to take the frame out. So I'm going to do it down both sides of this frame to make sure everything's okay. And what I want <coughs> in the process of inspecting this hive is to make sure that these bees have some brood. Now I just killed a bee because I jerked and didn't move slowly and it's probably going to make a mess. Again, this is nectar and pollen. So, so far, everything that we've seen up here at the front of the hive is nectar and pollen. Ouch. Go down and blow the smoke on the scene. It was my fault entirely because I stuck my finger right on a bee's bottom. And what was she supposed to do? Again, I ought to check this one and make sure that it's not dark, it's not on that side. All right, now I'm gonna use my smoke because they are not happy. And we may not stay in here very long. I don't see brood in a minute. We're gonna check the end of the, of the hive and then um, call it a day. That was some hell of a sting, that hurt. Okay, they don't usually hurt me for very long that one I can still feel. I think I forgot to check the other end of that. It's hard to do that gently without sliding down and making sure that the uh, frame is loose. Oh, I'm done. I'm going to get stung a lot in this hive, so I don't think I'm going to do any more than I've already done. Because they are not happy that I'm here. So we will save this for another day, the top of our hive. But I am going to look at the other end. I'm going to put my gloves on before I do. So now that I've been stung on both hands, it's a little hard to um, keep going gloveless and feel good about it. This is a swarm hive, and I haven't really got done a good inspection on it since it got here. And, um, and these bees will let me know. Don't come around here at quarter to four in the afternoon. We don't like it. And my hands are hot and sweaty, so my gloves, which I love, do not want to go on. Sorry for the delay here, girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen. I hate working with dogs, they feel so awkward. Let me put that back together, put this back together. Get out of the way, girls. Push this one away, over. Pick this one out. And put it back in. Now before we leave this half, I'm gonna come down here and see how much of it they're using and do I need to give them um, uh, another bar or two. This is the end of the top bar hive right here, and these are extra bars back here. So we can just slide these over because they're not doing anything except holding space. We can pull this one over and see if they are making use of these bars at the end. And they do not appear to be. Who 
through their best tuning on this one, which is how they start making wax. And they actually are using the bar right next to this one. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's how they start making wax. And I want to see if the queen is using this. If I find something, I'll show it to you. They're using this to store nectar also. Maybe next week I'm going to start at the back of this hive instead of at the front. They sure didn't like me going in at the front. I would really love in this great big hive to see some brood. Look at this pretty frame. It's about, sorry for the bad language, I'll try to delete that from the, I almost broke the comb off. I'm not going to do that to these girls. I'm stopping now. Okay. So you can see that there's some specific challenges to a top bar hive. One is how you take everything out of it. You have to be extremely careful. And if it's new wax, like the one I just pulled out and almost um, broke off and said a bad word, um, if it's new wax, it's real fragile and real easy to break it off. Now, I'm pushing all these back together like this. I'm going to take my bee brush, or first I'm going to smoke them and see if they'll go away and get these bees to leave the top where they've all gathered. I want them to go back out of this part of the hive because once I close it, it's a little hard for them to get out. So, go away, honeys. Go away. I don't want to brush you, and I'm going to if I have to. Go, go, go. was disperse them but didn't get them off of there. Now I usually leave these pieces of equipment sitting up here on the top bar because I only use them for the top bar hive and then I don't have to keep up with them in my um, tool kit. And I'm going to brush these bees out up to the front. My friend Bobby Chason put a hole at the end of this hive for me because bees were getting trapped in here they can come under the screen bottom board at the back and they can't figure out how to get out when they do that. But I thought with a, a hole they might do better. Okay, so much for you today.